people. My name is Edmund Saunders, and I'm going to show you what I do with the beams I got, a donation from a good friend. So he gave me a two beams, uh, six by six inches, and I'm going to show you. So they are six by six beams. They started as 18 footers. So my shop doesn't have too much headroom, so I mount put the one beam right there on top of the shelf, on top of the other wall, so maybe I'll hang something, and for now it's going to be here, but anyhow. So I'm going to do the beam <coughs> for my chin-up bar. That's, I had to take my old one down, and uh, so I'm going to do a new one, and I'm going to just cement that right into the ground, and the uh, rule of thumb is for every two feet above the ground, one foot is in the ground, so if I stretch my arm all the way up and I'm a little bit on tippy toes, I can touch an eight foot ceiling, so I'm gonna make probably around eight feet and three inches. So which means at least four feet have to go down and then I have to mount the flange. So I'll make it about nine feet long. So anyhow, I cut this beam down to 14 feet. It's easier to manage. And so I decided to treat this beam, not just as a basic beam, but I've, I'm actually decided to plane it. So I'll show you my planer. So, I don't know the proper word for this planer, but I don't know if you can see in the camera, but the blade has a little curve to it. So, after I'm done with planing, it's supposed to make a little tiny uh, indentation, so maybe it will give like a scraped look, uh, scraped hand look. So, I already did three sides, I'll show you how I do this. Oh yeah, and then here's another thing. It's unrelated, maybe a little, little bit. There's a couple knots right here. <clears throat> There's a, a knot which sticks out too much over the surface. And now if I'm gonna go with a planer, I'm gonna hit that knot and it's gonna just jag it out. So this is my solution. So this is a buffer. Uh, actually, they, they call it a buffer. And it's from Harbor Freight. Just bought it maybe two, three months ago. and supposed to be good so far it's good and the discs I use this is a buffer for the cars but what I do I buy these seven inch discs from the flooring place where the hardwood floor guys use the edge sander and you can get in 30 32 40 36 40 50 60 works really good very simple attached a large surface I got adjustable speed and it works amazing for many many applications so this is gonna be first one so I'm gonna do is, is I, I'm gonna sand off the knot, probably make it a little lower than the rest of the surface. So when it goes a planer over, it doesn't hit the knot. And also I'm gonna put a little bevel. I try to use a planer at the other end. I don't wanna just leave a square end on the top of the beam. So I'm putting a little 45 bevel on it and I'll tune that a little bit, make a nicer be bevel at the top of it. And I'm gonna sand this knot. So here it goes. <clears throat> Oh yeah, and so right now I have, it's a 40 grid used paper. It's been used, but it still has a good grid on it. It lasts a long time, and if you don't go too fast, it doesn't get burned or clogged, and it works really good. So, and you kids, if you are watching, don't smoke. Especially in the wood shop. Five seconds the knot is below the surface beautiful works amazing then I try to plane the, the corners and for this beam you know the wood grain goes sometimes one direction the other and it's hard to catch which, which one it is and if you make a nice clean corners you can use the same sander to ease the edges so it doesn't corner so it doesn't splinter so I'm going to just barrel it 
little down below the surface. Done. It's literally three seconds, five seconds. Feet. This is my four foot mark, so I go a little past so I don't have to do the bottom side. Now, the fun part the enjoyment. Oh man, when you have a sharp blade, start playing is just pleasure. Just pleasure, pure. figure out the grain could be very wild one one way it goes one direction the other way so you just do as you see Where the grain goes. Uh, not see, here it is, it just rips out the wood. But that's the nature of the wood. Feel by hand a little bit has a little indentations, but I think it's not going to show the beauty of the wood. So have another idea. Same grinder. I'm going to use a wire brush and I'm going to take out some of the grain out, and the, the wire brush is going to take the soft grain out and leave the leave the hard grain. So let me see if I'm going to show you. <coughs> You can probably even see it. It's very mild, but you can feel the sand. It has a little bit of a of a grooves in it. And here's a blade it has just a light radius, not straight. And then when you go around knots, this kind of doesn't look so good. So, so I'm gonna use a a wire brush, okay? push the locking button, grab it, give a little spin, and it comes out. Okay, here is the sandpaper, 40 grid, if you can see it. Here is the back of this. And then I'll put the, my wire brush. I don't know what grid it is. This is where I protect you. You should do that. Maximum RPM 4500. This goes only to 35. That's what it says on it. 
So I don't know, it's just not too coarse, not too fine, there's something in between. Something in between. Again, I hold this, tighten the nut, and then I grab those, some kind of rag or something, just grab it together and the nut and, uh, and the tool and go counterclockwise. No, clockwise actually, this is clockwise. Hold, spin, good. And there we go. That's it, pretty quick, right? So I'm gonna try to sh see if, if it's actually shoulder and grain, but I don't know if it's gonna be able to tell. So, let's see. I don't know if it shows really, but it's really, gives this rough sun, wood look. Well, actually not really rough sun, it's, it's a, the wire brush just takes out the softer grain and leaves the harder on surface, so it gives this interesting sort of wizard looking texture to it and then later on I'm gonna use a <laughs> later on I will use a, a Thompson's water seal and I already did a couple pieces of wood in my house little borders from 2 by 4s where I used the Thompson water seal and I had a little bit of a stain in it so I made it like look a little brown and it was a nuts it came out beautiful so this piece of wood is going to complement, although it's going to be on the other side of the house and I'm going to show you in the next video. And uh, so it will look the same color. And uh, probably, so I will do the upper portion, the, the nine feet I'll do in the Thompson water seal, but the, the, the bottom part, which is going to go into the ground, I'll use this green wood preservative, I don't know what the name of it, but it's green and nasty, it stinks really bad, but supposedly preserves the wood, and that's gonna go down in the ground and within cement. So that's a part one of, of my process, and I'll see you next time. On the next, next stage when I install the beam, when it's ready to be installed, when it's gonna be all dry, and, and uh, I'm gonna be digging a hole. So, until next time.